text this week. And uh, the text was, how can I draw, how can, it's a couple, how can we draw closer to the Lord? He said we're supposed to draw closer to the Lord. How can we do that? And so I tried to encourage them, and I tried to point them in some ways, but I said, your, your desire to grow closer to the Lord is an awesome thing. Because if you're desiring that, God wants us to do that, right? Amen. He wants us to draw closer to him, and he will draw close to us. Right. So I was going through some scriptures, and uh, titled my message is Ready for Solid Food. How many of you are ready for solid food? Amen. How many of you like some solid food? Well, I'm going to encourage some of you who are hungry for solid food and some of you that have been on milk, uh, I'm going to encourage you to get ready for solid food. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, and I just put the whole chapter, or 1 Corinthians 2, I was going through and I was trying to weed out and I thought, I can't weed out. I can't, there's nothing there I can take out. So, 1 Corinthians 2 starts, this is Paul writing to the Corinthians. What's interesting is uh, when you do look at the book of Acts, I believe that he had been in Athens and he had tried to basically have a debate with, with the Greek philosopher, those that were there. And, and uh, then he'd gone on to Corinthians, he wrote this. He said, when I first came to you, meaning Corinthians, dear brothers and sisters, I didn't use lofty words or impressive wisdom to tell you about God's secret plan or the mystery. Remember, I was talking about the mystery of God, which is Christ in us, the hope of glory. For I decided that while I was there, I would, with you, I would forget everything except Jesus Christ, the one who was crucified. Or that's the only thing. Jesus Christ and him crucified. Jesus Christ. I wonder sometimes if Paul, when he was in Athens, he was trying to, maybe he had accidentally fallen into the trap of trying to persuade people in a different way. But on his travels to, to Corinth, he, I wonder if he changed his mind and said, you know what, I'm going to proclaim Jesus. I'm going to proclaim Jesus and him alone and him crucified. But then he goes on to say, I came to you in weakness, timid and trembling, and my message and my preaching were very plain. Now, when you read about Paul, it's hard to imagine him in weakness, timid and trembling, or that his preaching was very plain, but that's what he did. And he said, rather than using clever and persuasive speeches, I rely only on the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I did this so you would trust not in human wisdom, but in the power of God. Proclaiming Jesus, trusting the Holy Spirit. Proclaiming Jesus, trusting the Holy Spirit. Totally, totally leaning on the Holy Spirit. And then he goes on to say, when he got there, he said, but yet when I'm among, he used things simple, but then he said, but when I'm among mature believers, I do speak with words of wisdom, but not the kind of wisdom that belongs to this world or to the rulers of this world who are soon forgotten. He spoke about Jesus in a simple way to those who didn't know he proclaimed what the Holy Spirit could do in their life to those who didn't know, but as they matured, he took them into the deeper things of God. And the note there says, believers live by a secret, the essence of which is Christ and his glorious purposes for the church, for the world. That's what we live. Simple as that. We live because of Christ, and our lives are found in Him, everything we have is found in Him. Amen. Everything. 
And the only thing that's really important is what does Jesus want? Amen? Amen. Amen. If our lives are surrendered to him as Lord, everything should be what does Jesus want? He went on to say, but the rulers of this world have not understood it. If they had, they would not have crucified our glorious Lord. That is what the scriptures mean when they say, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. I thought about it interesting. In the notes of my Bible, it said there's three ways of knowing. Three ways of knowing that are listed in this passage. There's the perceptual knowledge, meaning what I see or what I hear through observation and sense experience. But you know, you really can't know Jesus that way. Just by seeing what I, just by hearing, there's more to it than that. For one thing, I don't see Jesus because he's not here. Now I can experience Jesus, but that we'll get into a little later. So I, people say, I just don't see it. Maybe the word of God, and they say, I just don't see it. I just don't get it. It's because it's not seen in a natural. Conceptual knowledge for the heart and the mind by reason and intellectual inquiry. You could study the word of God. You could take your Bible and you could study and study and study and you can know everything about the Greek and the Hebrew. You can understand the cultures. You can understand all of that. You can study till forever. You can study, but if you, if it doesn't, if there isn't a different way, it's just reading it. I know of people that said, well, I really know the word of God. Yeah, but do you applying the word of God? Does the word of God change anything or just know it? Amen? I know what Easter is. Jesus died on the cross. Okay, you know that, but do you believe it? Do you believe that Jesus came as the as Son of God and he, he died for our sins and he was raised from the dead and he's sitting at the right hand of the Father? Do you know that? Do you believe that? Has that changed your life? And spiritual knowledge by being close to God since the knowledge of the things of God is more of a spiritual than an intellectual nature, there is no basis for glory in any religious leader for his supposed superior grasp of reality. Here's the thing. Don't look to me and say, I am any, you know. When we start looking at people and say, they have a grasp of everything. I'll be the first to say, if somebody says, what does this mean? I'll tell you, there's times I don't know. I'm growing in the Lord just like everybody else. And we can be more mature, but it doesn't mean that we have arrived yet. That's right. We, you know, we still keep growing in the Lord. And then as a mature person in Christ, we need to keep growing in the Lord. Amen. Today, my message is I want you to grow in the Lord. I want you to get ready for solid food. Remember last week I said if you were a child grows at a rate, it's kind of a set rate. From a baby, goes to crawling. Our granddaughter now is rolling over. She started eating cereal. She's growing, but it's just starting. Compared to our grandson, in Minnesota, who is eating, well, you get the pictures, you know, spaghetti, and more spaghetti on him than in, in, inside of him. Compared to our, as our grand, our grands, uh, our Maverick and Addison, they eat different. Then you take my Evan, who's 11, 10. Yeah. And Lindsay, who's 14, they eat different. But they're growing, and their life is changing. Amen? Amen. Amen. But it was revealed to us that God, or it was to us that God revealed these things by his spirit. 
for his spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. No one can know a person's thought except that person's own spirit, and no one can know God's thought, thoughts except God's own spirit. And we have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit, so we can know the wonderful things that God has freely given us. Are you interested in knowing and pursuing what God has freely given you in Christ? Are you interested in knowing what all that Jesus has for you? Yes. When we tell you these things, we do not use words that come from human wisdom. Instead, we speak words given to us by the Spirit, using the Spirit's words to explain spirit, spiritual things. And I said, explaining spiritual truths, truths in spiritual language and explaining spiritual truths to spiritual people. The Holy Spirit interprets spiritual things to spiritual people. But in verse 14 it says, but people who aren't spiritual or don't have the spirit who are only, have only physical life can't receive these truths from God's spirit. It all sounds foolish to them and they can't understand it. For only those who are spiritual can understand what the spirit means. Those who are spiritual can evaluate all things and they themselves cannot be evaluated by others. For who can know the Lord's thoughts and who knows enough to teach him? But we understand these things for we have the mind of Christ. Amen. What does it mean to be a spiritual person? Word person. The word. Does, you know, there are some people that are very spiritual people, but it doesn't mean that it is what I'm going to be talking about. Because in the notes, it says, people fall into three spiritual categories that clarify how the revelation of the cross by the Spirit is received from the human side. There's the natural man who is unregenerate and devoid of the Spirit, has no appreciation for the gospel. The spiritual man, regenerate and possessing spiritual maturity as seen in freedom from sectarian strife and has a nature that responds to the truth and unbelievers find it difficult to understand. The carnal man, regenerate but living much like an unregenerate, is a believer with childish ways as seen in jealous and sectarian spirit, an immature Christian lives more from human opinion, for human opinion than for Christ. The gospel is as simple as this. Sin brought death. Amen? Amen. Sin brought death. We die. We, we will die physically. But most importantly, it died spiritual, it brought spiritual death. Because human beings are made up of spirit, soul, and body. That's right. And sin kills the spirit. That's why we cannot make heaven without Christ. Because we are spiritually dead. We're dead in our trespasses and sin. Right. Everyone is dead in their spirit trespasses and sin. And where it's hopeless and unable, we're hopeless and unable to understand God. Right. We can't understand the spiritual things of God. That's why I've shared the gospel through the years. I had a friend I shared the gospel many times with and it, the look in his face was like, I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't get it. It's like, the birds flew over and didn't land. It just looked they did. I didn't. He didn't understand. But this is the good news of the gospel. Jesus came to earth and died to enable us to become alive right. in our spirit. That's right. When he said, you must be born again, he meant our spirit must be born again. Right. When Nicodemus said, well, how can a man go back into his mother's womb? Paul wasn't meaning or Jesus wasn't meaning that. He meant that spiritually we were dead and we needed to be alive. Eternal life. 
by faith, believing and accepting him. But that only happens when the Holy Spirit sparks faith. Because dead people can't hear. Spiritually dead people can't hear unless the Holy Spirit, through the Word of God, or somebody's witnessing to them, has taken that and gets it out into their heart and sparks faith. And when faith starts, salvation comes. New life comes. Amen? New life comes. How many of you remember the day you were born again? Was there not a... Uh, some people, when they get born again, it's just like, boom! Boom! There, why? Because there's life. And that spirit coming to life affects our soul. Amen? Amen. It affects our soul. <clears throat> because all of a sudden, our mind... There's something that clicks and we're starting to, there's revelation, there's understanding. Jesus died for me. I don't have to try to grunt and groan trying to get faith because the faith is sparked by the Holy Spirit. It's the grace of God. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth Jesus, you will be saved. Simple as that. Believe in your heart. When the Holy Spirit sparks the faith, believe. Then speak it. Say, Jesus, I believe it. I believe Jesus died for me and he's raised from the dead. I believe it. Because it, it just solidifies things. So the gospel is as simple as we're dead. And our trespasses and sin. And Jesus died to give us life. And when we can receive the life, we can understand. Or at least we can start to understand. When we, and, but here's the other thing that happens. When we are born again, if we do not grow and we stay carnal, then we start getting controlled by our emotions, our feelings, our past, our shame, unforgiveness, guilt, etc. Because they still will rule and reign in our soul, in our mind, in our feelings, in our heart. We can be spiritually born again, but there are things that need to be transformed. And that means our everything in the soulish realm. Amen? Amen. But that's where we need the spiritual understanding so that we can start saying to our mind, and to our soul and to our feelings, you're not going to rule over me. My feelings of shame and guilt are covered by the blood of Jesus. Right. Amen? Amen? They're covered by the blood. My life is new in Christ. I am a new creation. Right. The old things are gone. Behold, everything is made new in Christ. Amen? Amen. Everything is made new. You see why people walk in bondage to these things. Remember, or thinking about the woulda, coulda, shouldas, and all that stuff. Or not dealing with something that, that needs to be dealt with, or being controlled by our emotions or our feelings. That's why we need to be growing in the Lord. So that these things, as the Holy Spirit takes the word of God and he starts convicting us, we can change. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 2 said, I had to feed you milk without the solid food because you weren't ready for anything stronger. And you still, and you still aren't ready. For you are still controlled by your sinful nature. Sin shall not have dominion over us, for we're not under law, but under grace. Sin shall not have dominion over us. These things shall not have dominion over us. So the gospel is the most amazing thing. In Hebrews, 
the writer again chastised the Hebrews. He said, you have been believers so long now that you ought to be teaching others. That is a reason that we need to be growing in the Lord so that other people can see Jesus. Instead, you need someone to teach you again the basic things about God's word. You are like babies who need milk and cannot eat solid food. For someone who lives on milk is still an infant and doesn't know how to do what is right. Solid food is for those who are mature, who through training have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. What if I told you that we're going to eat downstairs after church? I want to provide the meal. But I mix up a bunch of baby cereal. I gave you a bib and I offered to feed you. How many of you would love to come downstairs and eat with us? Any takers? Hands? Anybody? We'll let you go first. <laughs> Just look at your arms. <laughs> That's good tasty cereal. <laughs> but if I said I have steaks downstairs, baked potatoes, salad, I what's your favorite dessert? Anyway, it's all downstairs waiting. How many of you would stick around? <laughs> Sylvia's sticking around. <laughs> okay, we need to be that way with the Word of God. We need to be hungry for the solid things. We need to start moving on into the solid things of what God has for us. Ephesians, it's... 1, 17 says, asking God, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you the spiritual wisdom and the insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. It's as simple as asking God. Help me to grow. Give me the wisdom. Give me insight into the word of God. Paul prays that all believers might progress toward maturity and fully appreciate the greatness and the power of their salvation, a power that he assumes will be demonstrated both in and through spirit-empowered believers. Are you a believer in Jesus Christ? Amen. Are you filled with his spirit? Amen. You should be filled with his spirit. You should ask for that, too, because the Holy Spirit is the one that's going to help you because the Holy Spirit is the one in... in uh, John 16, 13, 14 says, When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. So, we should desire the Holy Spirit. That's right. Because he's going to take the Word of God, and he's going to make it alive. Amen. And he's going to teach us. Up above in the, right above, above it says wisdom and revelation not to be interpreted as mystical. Wisdom concerns practical, workable principles. You know, God wants to teach you practical, workable principles of living for Christ. Amen? Amen. Wouldn't that be great if you had God teaching you through the Holy Spirit practical, workable principles on how to live? A life that pleases you and that glorifies Jesus and that to, that makes it a kingdom impacting life. Revelation means clear perception and applicable understanding. Again, a understanding you can apply. God wants us to use it. Amen. Amen. God wants us to use what He's showing us. The Holy Spirit is a divine and supernatural source of both. But I, I highlighted this. The wealth of God's investment in you is to under it, in you is understood. How many believe God has invested in you? 
How many of you had investments? What do you, what do you invest in? What do you invest your time in? Can I ask you that? If I was just a random question, what do you invest in? If it's your time, what do you invest? Something you like, right? Something you love, right? Something you value, right? Well, God's invested in you. Yeah. He's made a huge investment through Jesus Christ. That's right. Amen? And he wants you to succeed. Take this finger, point it up in the air. Bring it Point it at your chest. Say, God's invested in me. God's invested in me. A little louder. God's, God's invested, invested in, me, in me. And he wants me to succeed. How many of you some of you should be smiling? Amen. <laughs> Hebrews 12 talks about the word of God. And the word of God by the Holy Spirit is powerful, it's alive, it's sharp, it pierces down into our being, it exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Nothing's hidden from him. But when we allow that to do it, then we have a high priest who's entered heaven, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold firmly to what we believe. This high priest, or as understands our weaknesses, for he faced all the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. Let us come boldly into the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and will find grace to help us when we need it most. 2 Timothy gives this. He said, study and do your best to, prove, to present yourself to God, approved of workmen, testified trial, who has no reason to be ashamed, accurately handling and skillfully teaching the word of God. Paul, again, went back and said, by now you should be teachers. By now you should be disciple makers. You should be sharing what God has given you. And you say, well, I haven't gone very far on my walk. That doesn't matter. If you're growing in the Lord, you've got something to share with somebody who, who doesn't know. Amen. 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 What has Jesus done for you? We have a responsibility. How I many you got kids and grandkids? They need to know Jesus. They need to know what it's like to walk following Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. And the last thing I'll close with is from James. Ask for wisdom. See, whatever we want or whatever we need, we can ask for. Because he says, if any of you lacks wisdom, ask of God. And he'll give it liberally. But you got to believe when you ask. Believe that he wants to give you that. But then there's a warning about being double-minded. And then on the final notes, it says a double-minded man is a person drawn in two opposite directions. His allegiance is divided, and because of his lack of sincerity, he vacillates between belief and disbelief, sometimes thinking that God will help him, and other times giving up all hope in him. Such a person is unstable in all his ways, not only in his prayer life. The lack of consistency in his exercise of faith betrays his general character. God doesn't want you to be double-minded. God wants us to be single-minded, focused, saying, Lord, help me to grow. But remember what said that Jesus understands our weaknesses? Even when we've, we say, I don't feel like I'm growing very much in the Lord, remember, he understands. But go to him and say, Lord, help me. Help me. Because we can go into the throne room of God where all the mercy and grace God has is available. Why don't you close your eyes? This is for those that are 
watching too. First of all, you can't understand this if you're not spiritually alive. Because spiritual things are only understood through spirit. Without Christ giving us resurrection life, so to speak, in us, we can't understand. So if you don't, you can't understand this, doesn't make any sense, then I would ask the question, have you put your faith in Jesus Christ? Have you put your faith in Jesus Christ? Have you been born again? Is your spirit alive? Is your spirit alive? Because this will never make sense until it is. If you need Christ, now is the time. Lord, in Jesus' name, I pray. For anyone here or anyone watching, if you don't know Christ, you're not spiritually alive, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to put your faith in. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If the Holy Spirit has sparked faith in your life, don't wait. Faith can flee. The devil can steal it. It'll get harder if you don't respond. It'll get more difficult because your heart will be harder. So I pray for everyone that needs Christ right now. You will call on the name of the Lord. Don't wait. Do it now. You'll never regret becoming spiritually alive. If anybody's here and you want to do that, would you raise your hand? Here's the other thing. Maybe you're in one of those other categories. Maybe you've been carnal. Maybe you haven't grown. Maybe you're still a baby. Maybe you still would rather have milk and not solid food. Today's the day where you ask the Lord to help you to grow into the meaty things of God. We all need to do that. There's times I'm like, Lord, I just haven't, aren't, I'm not growing very much. I need help. So if you want to grow in the Lord, I want you just to raise a hand to the Lord this morning and say, Lord, I want to grow. I want to be, I want to be come that new creation. I want to be transformed from glory to glory into the image of Christ. So Lord, I pray for everyone who wants to grow. I want to grow. Help us to mature. Help us to get more and more solid food, more and more understanding, more and more wisdom, more and more revelation in Christ. Help us to grow, Lord, because other people need to see mature believers in Jesus. Because they're looking for somebody who really, their faith in Christ is real and we want to be real so Lord, I pray for everyone here that you help us to grow help us to grow and open our eyes Lord to see those that are looking who want someone to share the meat with and Lord I pray for those that are They've known you for a long time, and they are spiritually mature. I pray that they will continue to grow. I also understand that they have a role to be a teacher, to be a disciple maker. And it doesn't necessarily mean a teacher in the church, but being a disciple maker means that you speak into other people's lives to help them grow. And you're there for them. And you pray with them. And even if they call and ask questions you don't have the answers to, that's fine. You don't need to know all the answers. You just need to be a person that keeps showing, pointing them to Jesus and pointing them to the Word of God and saying, let's find out together or helping them to grow. I pray that you'll turn this church into a place 
that's filled with people who want, her, first of all, to be growing in you, and second of all, be showing other people how to come up to a new level in you. And I just pray blessing over everyone here today. And I pray, Holy Spirit, you'll take the word of God and you'll plant it deep in people's hearts. And we bind the enemy who wants to steal, kill, and destroy. And we'll reproclaim life and that more abundantly over everyone. And we'll give you the glory and we give you the honor. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen.